first, every voice matters. Secondly, it's also about enhancing decision making. Thirdly, language accessibility. And finally, it's also about customer-centric approach. Hi there, and welcome everyone. My name is Karel van Hule. I am product manager at Televic Conference. And today we're going to talk about our fourth generation wireless product family, the Confidia G4. Before we start, um, I'll just introduce you. So we'll have a, a webinar about 30 minutes. And if you could not attend the, the webinar, you will always be able to find this webinar and all, also the past webinars on our website. So if you surf to telefic.com slash conference and you look in the tab support, you will find this webinar and all previous ones. Please also stay alert because we were going to ask three questions. If you answer all three of them, you make a chance to win a gift card. Okay, so what are we going to do in this webinar? We're going to give an overview of our product family and all members of the product family. Then we'll talk about the difference between Confidia Flex G4 and Confidia Go G4. And at last, we'll talk about the combination of wireless and wired units in one system. Okay, so when we started with the creation of Confidia G4, the fourth generation of our wireless product, there were four items that were really important. First of all, it's wireless, so you don't want to bother about reliability of the connection or about the configuration of your system. So we wanted to make a very less or very free wireless system. Secondly, of course, you want to use it in many use cases. So we wanted to create a lot of flexibility. We'll talk about that later on this webinar. If you talk about uh, wireless, you also uh, get questions regarding security. And therefore, we wanted to make it the most secure system on the market. And of course, wireless means also batteries and having to manage batteries. So smart battery management was also very important. Now, if you look to the um, different um, verticals where this is used, actually you can use it in a lot of different verticals. First of all, if you need a temporary setup, typically in rental or events, then wireless is the most uh, logical choice. But also in corporate, for example, if you want to combine this uh, with a hybrid meeting with Teams or Zoom, having good audio quality, or if you have multi-purpose rooms, then wireless is also your choice. But also in larger institutions, uh, we see often wireless systems, especially in combination with uh, wired systems. Typically, if there are some positions that need to be there for some occasions or not, or sometimes also for dedicated places for people in a wheelchair where they can just give a dedicated uh, wireless system so that they can participate in the same meeting. City councils, they're also quite often wireless is popular um, because we also give the same capabilities as the wired flex unit like um, voting or authentication. Um, but then, of course, with the convenience of a wireless system. And another one is universities, where we often see our wireless units due to the fact that it can be um, used in different um, setups. So here is an example of a parliament uh, in Mallorca, where we have a combination of wireless units, but also with wired. So you see the nameplates on the back. So this is a nice uh, example of wired wireless. Also in the Congress centers or you typically use cases where you need to uh, have a flexible setup or sometimes where you need to divide the room in two or split the room in two, then a uh, wireless is an easy uh, solution. We have uh, a lot of city councils using this here in uh, Ville de Talon in France. For example, using also in the voting features, the RFID, the batch authentication with our wireless. 
Um, and this is typically used in a kind of uh, multi-purpose room, so the setup needs to be uh, very flexible to take away. Um, of course, also, let's say, in larger events, and there we have rentals where we're using our wireless system. Um, but also in corporate, as I said, uh, here uh, for, let's say, a larger uh, board meetings, but also sometimes just for a small uh, hybrid meeting room to have good audio quality for the remote site. And City Council in Belgium, where they use the same room for other purposes, here also wireless is used. And uh, of course, also the university I talked about, there also quite often we see wireless. Sometimes the furniture does not allow to cut holes in, uh, in the furniture, so there a wireless is the only option, like we have here in, uh, in the Netherlands. And so there are a lot of use cases where we can use our wireless. Now, let's dive into the different uh, components. First of all, the heart of the system. That's, of course, this white little box in the middle. That's the access point, access point of our uh, wireless system. Um, you can connect two types of delegate units to that, and that's the Flex G4 on the left side, and then the Go G4. The Go G4 has the same form factor, same look and feel as the Flex, but without the touch interface, so without the touch display, so making it more economical. On the right side, we see, of course, our charger. So it's um, a smart charger to allow to uh, charge 10 batteries at once. Let's look at the access point itself. So you see this um, access point has a LED status or a status LED on the front, making sure that you know what the status is, if it's running uh, well, or if it's paired with a wired system, or if it's, uh, sorry, linked with a wired system, or if it's pairing with uh, wireless units. It also has a small button on top of it. So if you press on that, you can start the pairing process, making sure that you can easily uh, do a discovery and then stop the pairing process by pressing it again. On the back of the unit, you have um, a lot of uh, connectivity. Let's start, you see some uh, RG45 connectors. So the first one is a uh, LAN port to make sure that you connect your PC for the configuration port. But it's also um, the port that you need to uh, power because it has PoE capability. So either you use a PoE switch or you use a PoE uh, um, power injector. The next two uh, ports are the Plexus ports. So these you use when you want to combine your wireless system with a wired system. Uh, it's not necessary, of course, but if you want to combine it, you will just connect your access point and you daisy chain it uh, like uh, other units. The USB port is used for recording, so you can just insert a USB stick or a USB disk and you can, you're ready to record the audio. A reset button to go back to factory reset. And then there is a Dante port, so we have the possibility uh, uh, to have 8x8 eight eight, uh, Dante. So with our, sorry, with our access point currently, we can only inject uh, seven languages plus floor, and we can get it the floor uh, or the mix of the floor also on Dante. And then we have two analog ports, so for have balanced audio in and out. So that's with regard to the connectivity. Um, if we then have a look at the access point and its capabilities, um, let's say it's built on Wi-Fi 5. So that means, of course, it's already a lot of improvement in the performance because we have more uh, um, bandwidth there. But it also allows to work into harmony with other systems, with other Wi-Fi systems, so we can coexist uh, quite easily. Um, also, we have the clean channel manager on our access point. That means that we can always search for the most optimal uh, channel. And if there would be another system, another access point, or another, another Wi-Fi system occupying our uh, channel, it will switch automatically to another one. It also makes use of the DSF, DF, DFS channels. So depending on your region, you may use it or not. 
but uh, DFS is used by raiders and our access point can scan frequently this kind of uh, channel. If it's not occupied by a raider, then we can also use this. So for a real-time conference system like ours, it's quite all important to also have the capability to use these. Okay, in terms of uh, antennas, so the access point has, well, five antennas, so three for uh, sending signal and two for the scanning. But also the delegate units do, do have two antennas inside. So that means, uh, well, in contrary to other systems, that we have better uh, signal paths, having an improvement on the reliability of the signal. And that means also that we can mitigate, let's say, um, multi-part distortion. So if you have difficult rooms uh, with a lot of uh, RF reflection, like if you would have uh, metal structures, a low ceiling and so on, um, with antenna diversity, we will allow a better um, signal reception. So we do have, let's say, examples in the past where we used our previous generation access points, where we know that we had problems when we went back with our G4 system and we tried it, we saw that it worked perfectly. So this really has an, uh, a big impact on your signal. You also see that there are no external antennas. Um, so you don't have to bother about how to position your access point. It has an omnidirectional radiation pattern. So you can just put it uh, in, in your room. Of course, you don't have to put it on the bottom of your closet. Make just sure that it's connected in your room. All those items I talked about, make sure that we have, in fact, a worry-free wireless connection. So we can make sure that it's a reliable connection and that the meeting can, will, have, uh, will take place without any interruption. Okay. So this is the first item, very free. Then I said uh, security is also very important. So in our uh, wireless system, we do have a uh, radius server inside the access point, point, making sure that every delegate unit can authenticate themselves to the access point individually. So this means that every uh, delegate unit will set up a private channel and will exchange um, the uh, keys individually. So it's WPA2 uh, grade authentication. And it's not personal grade, but it's enterprise grade. Enterprise grade means that you have individual keys and not one key for the entire system, like in personal grade. Um, so that means we do have individual keys, making it more secure. And every time you restart the system, these keys will be renegotiated. Okay. Then the battery, it has a 12 hour autonomy, it has lean uh, technology and there is a small button on that battery so that you can just check the uh, status of that battery. It just has five LEDs indicating the status. Of course, you can also check this in the uh, web interface of the access point or um, so making sure that all uh, delegate units are having a charged battery. In the compartments, of the um, delegate unit, you see that there are uh, there is place for two batteries. So this makes sure that we um, offer uh, the option to extend your autonomy with another 12 hours. So one battery is 12 hours, two batteries is 24 hours. And having two compartments means also that you have a hot swap functionality. So that means that you can keep your unit alive and still changing the batteries, or let's say one of the two batteries, without affecting your meeting. Charging batteries, you do this in the charging tray. It's a smart charging tray. That means it has a built-in web server to make sure that you can monitor the status and the health of each battery. And in 45 minutes, half of the battery is charged. In another, uh, let's say in two hours, you have 100% uh, of your battery charged. The charging tray is also very small. It's only one U high, so it means that it does not take much place in your rack. Okay, and then we have a transport case. So um, making sure that you can uh, transport 16 um, wireless units. 
It is not only meant for your wireless units, it can also be used for wired units, of course, so it's not specifically for wireless. But if you have a wireless system, you can use it, and you can also put your access point there. The charging tray is not uh, included in this charging tray, so there, uh, sorry, uh, transport case, and the charging tray cannot put there. Therefore, typically, you need other um, trolleys to transport this. Okay. Um, let's move towards the discussion units. So, um, if we look to the overall uh, look and feel of discussion units, we can say it has a contemporary modern design. Also, it's very low, so meaning you do not, you not have a visual disturbance on your uh, desk. And it has a qualitative look and feel. So, if you move around, for example, the microphone, it will not um, move. Um, so, that's just something the stability of this unit is something we really took into uh, account when we created the new uh, wireless unit. If you look to the back, um, we see that there is a USB-C connector. This USB-C is meant for keeping your unit alive, even if the battery is, uh, is empty. It's not meant to charge your battery, so it's really to make sure that your unit will uh, operate or stay operational even without batteries. Then we do have uh, the status LEDs, so it's just showing if your microphone is active if you're, or if you're regressing the floor. And then we have the headphone connectors on the left and the right. If you look to the connector itself, the microphone connector you will see has no an, uh, USB-C uh, kind of connector. That means uh, there is no uh, screw lock connector anymore, it's really a uh, new type of connector making sure that you can just connect your microphone even without uh, having to screw the microphone uh, to the unit. Make, so making sure that you can uh, win a lot of time, uh, just push it there and it's uh, ready to go. Also, the microphones have a little bit uh, bigger capsule, making sure that the audio quality is even better. In terms of Units, I talked about it in the beginning, we do have two kinds of units. We do have the Flex and the Go. As you can see here, the Flex has the capability of showing a lot of different interfaces. Um, so it has a touch display, making sure that you can, let's say, see the speech timer, you can see who is speaking, you can vote, you can, uh, let's say, use it uh, for voting management or even recording and so on. The Confidia Go, on the other hand, does not have this display, so making sure that you keep focus on what is essential, namely the discussion itself. And it's also, of course, then more economical. Um, so let's first focus on the Confidia Flex. There we have, of course, the microphone button with uh, the LEDs that can light up depending on your use case, chairperson, delegate, dual delegate. Then we do have the RFID batch, uh, the batch reader, so you can insert your batch there. We do have headphone connectors left and right. If you have a dual delegate, then you can choose uh, two different languages left and right um, independently. We have the interactive display with haptic feedback. So for certain crucial functionality, you will feel, you will feel a small vibration so that you make sure, so making sure that you can uh, that you can be assured that everything has been pressed. Um, volume control. So if you insert your headphone, you will see that you have the volume buttons, and then of course you have tactile references. The light sensor makes sure that you will adjust adjust your brightness according to the room, and um, in fact. The interactive display makes it possible to allow a lot of use cases. So, for example, if you have, uh, if you're the chairperson, you will have those special buttons. If a delegate is there, you can just see, speak, or request the floor. And if it's a dual delegate, you will see two different buttons, left and right. So that's, for example, for camera tracking, the camera knows which person is actually speaking. Um, Maybe if you have now, at this moment, right, right away, a project in mind where the Confidia Go or Confidia Flex could be used, 
please uh, request more information. You will see now a pop-up coming. Please click on that and you can request more information. We will contact you afterwards. Now, um, also some uh, small feature, but something that is uh, liked a lot is this uh, logo. So the possibility to add a splash screen or a, a logo of your company or your organization before the meeting starts. So it's easy to configure and you can easily change it uh, just by uploading a new picture. As you can see here, for meetings where uh, the seatings are fixed, you can show easily the name of the person who should, who should sit there, so that persons who come in the room can easily find their seat. Uh, even if it's dual delegates, it's possible to show that. If it's free seating, meaning everybody can sit wherever they want, we clearly indicate that they have to use their badge to um, log in on the unit. The chairperson has some functionality, so they can actually control the meeting, uh, like uh, we do have a next in line button if there is a request list. There is also the possibility to record the meeting, uh, to manage the voting sessions and so on. The delegate itself, of course, has also some functionality. Uh, first of all, they indicate clearly who is speaking. Um, you can see also the speech timer if you are speaking yourself. You will see the voting buttons, but also see the voting results afterwards. Um, now we are going to show a small uh, movie of our rental partner Duval, how easily it is to set up an, a Confidia Flex G4 system. Okay, so now we're going to see this. Okay, so here we see that this access point can easily be mounted on a uh, VISA mount. You can act or power the units by a PoE connector or a, P power, a PoE switch. You just put in the push and lock microphone so you don't have to screw it anymore. So it's uh, very convenient. And then you will see that just pressing on the button, uh, the unit will be activated and will start up. There is standard one battery inside. And so it has an autonomy of 12 hours, making sure that you will do most meetings. If you want more, uh, you can add a second one. Surfing to the web browser, you can easily configure, for example, attributing licenses or even adding languages. So by just filling out in the name of the language, you can say, okay, these are the interpretation languages that will be used. You can easily change the audio parameters like volume, um, you can also change the default routing inside your uh, web server. The RF channel management, so you can see what channels are occupied and choose another one if needed, or even check the battery status by the same uh, web interface. Also adding a logo, as you can see here, is quite easy. Just upload another a picture and it's over there. So in just a few moments, you can just start with your system um, so also in setup, we made some improvements. Okay, so let's start now with uh, the first question. It's not really a question, it's more a poll. What is for you the most interesting capability of our Confidia uh, G4 system? So I want you to choose uh, one of the six uh, features here. Is about the feature of having white wireless. Is it about the aesthetics, the design? Is it about the audio quality? Is the most item, most important item, reliability? Is it about the smart battery management or the flexibility of our uh, system? So I give you a few moments to pick your choice. Let's move now towards Confidia Go. Um, here, let's say, we do have an, um, a specific unit that does not have a user interface. So it means that we do have, uh, let's say, for uh, a small, some buttons that will only appear when it's relevant. For example, for the chairperson, we will see a next in line uh, when it's needed. So if there is somebody requesting the floor, you can press that button. It's a, just a secret until it um, touch button. You will also have the possibility to see if the Wi-Fi uh, signal is not good. 
and also an indication if the battery is not um, fully charged anymore. So, but if there is no indication if the battery is fully charged, if the Wi-Fi is okay, you will not see anything. You still have, of course, the tactile references, um, and of course, all the rest stays the same. So, like the microphone button, you can use it with the variable uh, LEDs. So, if it's chairperson, you will see the chairperson buttons. If it's dual delegate, you also see the dual delegate um, indications. And then, of course, we do have the headphone connector, left and right. Volume control will also pop up when the headphone is inserted. And then we have, let's say, as I said, the next in line that only will pop up when it's needed and the Wi-Fi channel or low battery indication when needed. So in general, it has the same look and feel, but without the display, of course. And it's a cost-effective solution where you have, let's say, um, no need for more advanced meeting features. So, what is use case? Typically, of course, if it's only discussion either, but also you could use it, for example, in a large room um, and then only give the chairperson a flex for, for more advanced meeting features, but then the delegates and configure go. Uh, or for some participants that do not need to vote, you can say, okay, they will never have the possibility to vote, we give a configure go. Or sometimes it's just used if you have a wired system and you want to extend with a few units just in case, then also the Configure Go could be a solution. So here you see a detailed uh, overview of what is possible with Go and what is not possible. In fact, we still have the same look and feel, next in line, configurable as chairperson. That's still possible. Of course, we do have the two batteries, the USB-C power, headphone connector, and the dual delegate. But what is not possible, that is, Everything with more advanced meeting features like voting, language selection for interpretation, batch identification, uh, recording management, agenda management, uh, the logo, uh, the name uh, or the agenda topic, the speaker detection, a uh, speaker time indication, but also the haptic feedback that is not uh, possible with on our Configure Go. Okay, so. For those of you who uh, paid a lot of attention to this webinar, um, this should not be a difficult question. The question is, what feature is not possible on a Configure Go? Dual delegates, next in line for chairperson, haptic feedback, making it possible to configure it as chairperson or delegate unit, or the USB-C power connector. Right. Okay, now let's move to the next topic, and that's the combination of wired and wireless. There we do have a very unique, uh, let's say, capability to make sure that we have one uh, combined solution, um, very convenient and very easy to configure. So we do have the possibility to, of course, have the interpretation also on our wireless. And let's say, let's look to some use cases where you would like to have a combination of wired and wireless in one solution. First of all, um, you have, as I said, the situations where you cannot put wired solutions because you have, uh, for example, old furniture where you cannot cut uh, or make any cuttings in the table. And therefore, these specific uh, seats, you need to put a wireless one. Um, sometimes you just need to add a few more participants to a wired meeting. Uh, if you have a ch somebody in a wheelchair, then it could be used. Um, or if there are, let's say, a uh, next door room um, to invite citizens to, a, to speak in a city council. Also, this is um, a use case. Of course, there are other use cases um, where you need to combine this with a wired system. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so let's first have a look to the architecture. If, we do, if you do have a wired system, it looks like this. You have an, a central unit, you have wired units in daisy chain. And then by just adding an access point to that, you can combine it and make it wired and wireless in one system. So it's quite easy to, uh, to have one setup. Next to that, we do have 
um, let's say, the interpretation part. If there is no combination with the wired system, of course, you do have the possibility to insert languages, interpretation languages, through Dante. I explained that you can have the possibility to insert seven languages there. Um, you can do it through any third-party uh, Dante injection, but you can also, for example, use um, our central units with interpretation units and go over Dante to a wireless system. But it's much easier to just directly connect our access points on the Plexus bus so that you have the languages automatically available. Another advantage is that you are not limited to seven languages, but you have eight languages now available on your, uh, on your wireless units. So the first eight will be, able, will be available on your wireless units, while the rest, if you have more than eight, will of course still be available on your wired units. Another use case to combine it with an engine is if you want to extend or make, if you want to have a larger uh, system. So if you have a system where you need more than 128 delegate units on one access point, because this is the limit, you are limited to 128. If you need more uh, in your room, then this is possible, of course, but then you need to combine it uh, with an central unit. So if you put two access points on one uh, central unit, you can uh, easily put uh, more than 128 units there. And so you can go up to, in fact, 512 units if you have four access points on one central unit. So room expansion, having a big room is one of the use cases, extra use cases of combining it with a wired system. Um, also, a range extension. Suppose your units are far away, you, have, you need more than 40 meters, then you can add multiple access points so that all units are covered. Um, so having an extended range is not a use case. Um, room splitting. So if you need to divide your room in two separate parts, then this can also easily be done by just adding two access points to your central unit. In your software or in the web server of the engine, you can say, okay, we decouple or uncouple these access points, and then it will be just a standalone room. So for example, here you see also that the logo of, this, um, uh, of the room A and the logo of room B are different. They behave different, they are two different rooms. But just with one click, you can couple both uh, access points and then automatically it will behave as one other room and you will see that the logo now is the same in the entire room. So it will behave as one room. So it's very easy to just choose between, oh, and let's say, standalone setup or a combined setup. This also is something that makes us very unique in the market. Uh, one note here, you need to take into account that, uh, of course, the licenses are now used from the central unit. So in that case, the extra license file needs to be provided by us to make sure that you have the same licenses uh, on your own overall system compared to your two standalone systems. Again, the same question. If maybe now another uh, project pops up, if you say, okay, maybe room combination, room splitting, or the combination wired wireless it seems something that I can use in a project, please let us know. Uh, we do have this uh, button popping up. Please click on that and we'll contact you. And then we can end with the third question um, for those of you who paid attention. How many languages can be inserted with Dante on the access point G4? So not with Plexus but over Dante directly on the access point. None, you always need a Plex engine to insert languages. Four languages plus floor, seven languages plus floor, or eight languages plus floor. Okay. And that's it. So this was in short our webinar. Um, please uh, stay tuned for our next webinar. So if you want to know more about how to organize a factory tour with Unite, we'll have another webinar on uh, Thursday, uh, October 10th. Please subscribe. Uh, you can do that on our website. And as I said in the beginning, 
this webinar, you will get the recording automatically, but also you will be able to find the recording on our website under the tab support, and then go to webinars. Um, also there you will find the previous webinars, uh, like we had the one, for example, of Unicos before and all the others also. And if you want to stay tuned about all our um, other information, news, updates about new products, please follow our socials uh, like LinkedIn, uh, YouTube or Facebook and you will be uh, up to date. Okay, thank you very much for uh, attending our webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and I would like to see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. First, every voice matters. Secondly, it's also about enhancing decision-making. Thirdly, language accessibility. And finally, it's also about customer-centric approach.